what what inspired you to start working there? I've always been a fan of the Post. I've read it since I was a child. Wow. So it must be nice to finally have the opportunity to, to work at that place. It's kind of a dream job. I really love it there. So what all of us reading the article, uh, even in Rochester, thought it, thought it was hilarious. Do you have any background in comedy? <laughs> I don't. None. I don't, but that... But the post, the post is known for its a very specific sense of humor, um, and it's it's one of the things I love about it. And uh, it really, that second column was so interesting because the the first column generated a ton of, as I'm sure you can imagine, outraged emails from Rochesterians, which I never saw coming. Um, and then the second column, it now it's like breaking down like by 50-50. Some people are still really outraged, but a, more people are now like, oh, I get the joke. I get like, it's a, like we're all in on it together, and we're all going to participate in this great upstate-downstate rivalry. <laughs> so I, I do want to backtrack for just a second. I got a chance to uh, look, just check out some of your other articles. Was there – have you received this kind of – backlash at anything else you've written to, to this extent oh sure yeah it, it, it happens um i mean it's part of the reason i don't really participate in social media um you know i feel like if people want to get a hold of me they know how mm. um so but yeah it, ha it happens plenty but you can't you can't do what i do for a living and not have a thick skin so you do get to cover basically what you want so is this original Wegman story, something that was assigned to you, or you sought it out and wrote about it? I didn't seek it out. It was just was sort of like I had this thought after reading, like, down here in New York City, the opening of Wegmans at the Brooklyn Navy Yard, it was like wall-to-wall -wall media coverage. I mean, every media, like, as I, as I said in the first column, every media outlet in New York City from the time to local news like ABC, NBC News, to CNN, that to like international outlets w were covering the excitement over Wegman's opening in Brooklyn, and I just I thought to myself, when did New York City become a place where we get excited over a grocery store opening? Like this is the stuff that suburbanites flee to New York City to escape, myself included. Um, and so I just thought, I want to write about this. Like, what, what's happened to New York? I, I, I don't have the answer, but I, I, I wanted to ask the question. And I was really taking to task my fellow downstaters, um, who all thought it was funny. The ones who reached out to me thought it was really funny. They didn't take it. They, didn't, they weren't affronted at all. It was the <laughs> upstaters who really made, made themselves heard loud and clear. So it's w one thing I thought this probably proves your point about suburbanites, me being one myself is, you know, you ask, why are people getting so worked up over a grocery store? And literally, Maureen, my first thought was, well, because it's Wegmans. And to me, it's obvious. And I think to, to everyone in Rochester, it's obvious. We don't take our grocery stores for granted. Well, that, you know, I have a fellow uh, colleague who is from Rochester, and we had, we had a deep dive about this. Uh, and, and he, he sort of explained to me what Wegmans uh, is and represents to people in Rochester. That said, um, this was not an isolated incident. I think it was back in 2017 when a fairway opened in Red Hook in Brooklyn, New York, and people similarly lost their minds. Hmm. So I, I, I really, you know, I really don't quite know, you know, know what's happening to this once great city uh, that uh, is known as the capital of culture and art and theater and everything you could possibly want, and yet people are losing their minds over supermarkets. Have you been to the Brooklyn Wegmans? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why not? Because I live, like, steps from a Whole Foods, and sometimes I don't even want to go there. I'll just, like, <laughs> direct or Amazon Prime and get it delivered right to my door. <laughs> all right. That, that, ex that explains that. So, so this is still all a mystery to you about how Wegmans is, like, how everyone deifies Wegmans so much. 
It's not a mystery to me in as much as it, it had been before. Um, now, as my colleague explained to me, and he spoke to a lot of the people who were waiting online, you know, at 4 a.m. on a very cold, drizzly, dark morning, uh, that, that most of the people he spoke to were upstaters themselves. Mm. They weren't people who were dyed in the wool New Yorkers, who have been here for, you know, 10 years or more, who definitively fled the suburbs because it's not for them. The city is more their speed. Uh, and that they have sort of one foot in, one foot out. Um, and that made more sense to me, uh, you know, that it's, it's the expats who, who might really still be hungering for uh, their hometowns uh, than the people who were sort of um, went one way and never looked back. Gotcha. So I do, I do, we do have to ask because some, particularly in the first column, some of these, well, the first and the second one, some of these lines about Rochester being grim and depressing and that, that the emails came from not AOL accounts. I mean, <laughs> all right, tell me about that line because obviously that one's still funny. Like, what? tell me about that joke. It's great. Thanks. Uh, listen, I, I was encouraged by my editor to uh, push back hard. Uh, after after the onslaught of, uh, of of negative emails, and but what really tipped the balance was the Red Wings invitation and uh, the announcement that they were throwing a night named after me, which we just I mean we just loved and we just, we just started laughing. It was so brilliant. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean as as you can see in that second column, like I I was taken to the woodshed by you guys, you know, and. Uh, Part of the post DNA, we push back. So, uh, and I, I got a fair amount of emails, by the way, from proud AOL subscribers up there. <laughs> well, I guess we still have some small contingent that uses AIM. I'm sure. I don't know any personally, but I'm sure that <laughs> some still do. So, I mean, that that moment when I so it must have been a no brainer then when this invitation came in that you had to go. Oh yeah, there was no question. Uh, we are we are very excited at the New York Post. Uh, I wasn't kidding when I said there will be a contingent with me. Um, it's 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 one of the funniest things that's ever happened to me in my career, uh, and I, I really love it. And I really I, I I'm really looking forward to uh, you know I've had no shortage of emails that are now since I've taken up the invite uh, offering to show me around. Uh, <laughs> so I sense that the uh, the thaw may be coming. I like to kind of end uh, each, you know, each uh, each interview that I do with someone who's creative and funny with three big picture questions. You 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 got them for me. You got those in now? Sure. Cool. So this is typically I ask with more of a Rochester angle, but since you talked about how New York City is this cultural epicenter, uh, what about New York City makes it such a great place for culture, art? comedy and everything else to not only continue to grow but thrive as well well i think there's a couple of things off the top of my head one is it, it really attracts a very specific kind of person i mean when you come here to try to do anything no matter what your industry or field you're really going to come up against the best of the best um and it's it's not necessarily easy to live here uh and that's part of the challenge um and it's part of the fun and excitement. Uh, and another another thing that is really specific to New York is uh, you can use public transportation to get to any part of the city, any time, day or night, pretty much. And you are bumping up against people of every race, religion, socioeconomic background. It's a kind of, of, of um, mix that you really don't encounter really anywhere else. At least I haven't. Um, and those are the things that I think really uh, make New York special. Cool. Next one. If you could accomplish anything in your writing career and be happy with your career, knowing that you accomplished that one thing, what would it be? That's a big. That's a big question. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep my focus right now to winning over hearts and minds in Rochester. <laughs> Beautiful. Couldn't have asked for a better answer. One more for you. 
Do you have any advice for aspiring writers? Yes. Write what you think and what you believe, and don't worry so much about what other people are going to think. Beautiful. I do have one more question for you. When you're in Rochester come August, are you going to come to the Pittsford Wegmans? It's become clear that I must make a pilgrimage to the Mecca. 